Yeah. So is this... This is finals. This is the finals, yes. Yep. I also expect air starts and a lot of shenanigans, so we're not going to get to see, like, necessarily the strength of the, um, uh, the hovercraft start. I think we might see that, but the first map... What was the first map? It was something weird. It was Fields of Isis, actually. Yeah, for some bizarre reason, something possessed Lowry to choose Fields of Isis as the opening map for the finals. Really, I just think that something's possessed Lowry. I think we might need to call in an exorcism. If you know any priests that live around... Uh, live in Lithuania? Sorry, Estonia? Well, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia, that whole area. If you know any priests that live around there that are willing to travel to Estonia? That might be necessary. I think Lowry might have some demons in them. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, with these map choices, I just don't know. Yeah, I think he's trying to go for more unconventional things to force players to prepare their strategies a little bit differently. And you can see that the players are picking the players are picking like Red Comet and Comet Catcher and things like that. Yeah, actually, no, I'm I'm totally feeling that. I I I agree with that. That's a good idea. I just think that it just surprised me at first. I mean, they are good. They are turning out to be pretty good maps. As long as they're balanced, that's fine. It's just that the the choices are a little bit unconventional, like you said. And that is definitely, well, no, no fewer Red Comic games, but at least there's fewer mandatory Red Comic games. Because, of course, everyone knows my opinion on Red Comet. Mm. But yeah, this is definitely interesting. The Blue Bend one, I think, is probably my favorite to see. I actually hope that people play that one of Google Frog or Fail actually picks that in the finals. Because that was actually pretty neat. That and also the one that was picked second one, what was it? Terra. That's it. That's another one I would like to see again. Although Terra was not mandatory. That was Magman's choice. Yeah, it's an interesting choice too. Um, I think he just wanted to, to choose a map, map where um, uh, he uh, he's clearly, if it was Magman's choice, he's clearly practiced then that, that sort of rush towards the high value mexes, the, the overdrive style. Yeah, that was clearly not something that he just uh, occurred to him, but something that he considered is, as a trump card to try and uh, uh, beat them out in uh, in in his second match. Well, he was right, or they were right too. Yeah, that was exactly yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Magman, it's interesting. Yeah, I called it. But I mean, Magman and this bunch are pretty close in terms of Elo rating. Mm. It's like 150 off, so it's like I think it was saying in the balance there was like 33 percent chance that Magman would win. So two to one odds. It's not terrible. Actually, that that follows with from the bronze match score. Right there. Although admittedly, that's rather small sample size. It just so happens that it lines up with what the balancer expects. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we are starting the game now on Fields of Isis, and anyone anyone in the crowd who has played Supreme Commander at all should recognize this map right away. It is one of the maps that has been ported over from Supreme Commander, because why not? It's like this, Fields of Isis, and... I think there's another, sorry, this, Finn's Revenge, and there might be another one, but I'm not sure offhand. Is this, uh, it's Supreme Battlefield. Oh, yes, yes, Supreme Battlefield, thank you. That's the other one. Yeah. Is this really a Supreme Commander map? Because it's like, oh, yeah. Like, one of the interesting height fields I can think of. It's just, you know, six straight lines. Oh, no, but this it is, does, it does this is straight off Supreme Commander, including the way the reclaim is laid out. Like, this is a Supreme Commander map. Everything right. about it lines up, or nearly everything about it. I haven't played Subcom in a little while, like a few years, but everything about it, to my memory, at least in the rough details, the way the reclaims laid out, the way the height maps laid out, that is all Subcom. Google Frog at yeah. the west side of the map. Spider Factory start out rather unconventional on this map. The terrain makes sense, but unconventional. Usually you see tanks. And Fail Thoughts on Air Start. Well, there you go. There's your Air Start. Yeah, I think I'm... Uh... Mm, it's really interesting because he's actually going for a bomber start. And if you air start versus Google, you should always start fighter instead of bomber because he starts air so often. In this case, it will sort of work. Maybe? Hmm, I don't know. Hasn't been called yet. Google Frog is going for the scouting, but Google Frog will probably switch to tarantula or just go for four defenders around their main base and not worry about it. Actually, I'm, I'm betting on the ladder, come to think of it. And here comes that first bomber and first raven coming in. The flea going around the side, getting sp Oh, that was surprising. Google probably didn't pay attention to that. Didn't go around right next to the mechs and take it out. 
Yeah, I think that's um, it, it, one of the best things you can do against um, an air start is actually um, spiders in some ways, because you have to flee. It's impossible to bomb. It True. gives you perfect knowledge. But your constructor has 750 hit points, which is exactly snipeable. Mm -hmm. There's not many constructors, not all constructors are snipeable uh, from yeah. one run. Yeah. Um, but this spider constructor is, which makes it actually this might be a little more difficult if Failthus realizes that and goes for the constructors. Skazi, this actually is a Supreme Commander map. It might have been originally a Total Annihilation map port of Supreme Commander, but no, this is this is Supreme Commander. Even just you can check Forge Lines forever to see what they have in their map list. I'm I'm not sure if this will be on there because they might have decided it's boring or decided to get rid of it, but this <laughs> is this is a classic Supreme Commander map. Like it, it's interesting that um, Failthus is coming out with the um, crane right now. Uh, if, mm -hmm. if Google's paying attention, he could possibly snipe it with fleas, but he's he's not, and now a, a, a defender's coming up, so there's not much chance of that happening now. Yeah, because he sort of needs yeah. to shut down cranes, because this is what Google Frog himself did, is, you know, just the crane and the um, cranes and ravens. And it looks like the style's inverting slightly. Google Frog going for heavy defense, and Failthos going for more of the aggressive style. I think it's reasonable for him to go heavy defense, um, heavy it, defenders. It is against, against I think that's air. What this is the four defenders that I mentioned before, so that that does make sense. Although they aren't expanding behind it too much. They're building radar. Sorry, they're building wind behind it, but not building any metal behind it. Which is a little bit surprising. And it looks like Google, sorry, Failthouse is probably going to spot this out. They are looking for metal. They aren't going to spot any. And they're going to spot that wind. Not sure they're going to go for it, though. I wouldn't reckon, I hope they don't, because that would be a bad idea. Scout it out, yes, don't bomb it. It's a waste. Oh, bomb the weaver! Oh, yeah, bomb the weaver works. Yep, that was he a good knows idea. it. He's onto it. The first um, first tarantula is up. First tarantula is up, but uh, Felthus didn't fly over the um, defenders, which is what would have killed him if he had flown yeah, back over the defenders. That was very well done, Felthus. It's that was good execution. There's, this is gonna. This looks like it will be an interesting series. Felthus pulling ahead pretty quick right out of the bat. Yeah, this is a very constructor-heavy sort of map. It benefits from having heavy constructors because they flee on the north, taking out the defender. It's probably yeah, it's going to get it before it goes up. But um, oh, we're only just. But wow. that stops. Is it constructor-heavy map because you have expansion behind you, so you want to expand quickly behind you and defend forward. And, but also because there's all these can these um rocks that you need to reclaim. Yeah, and Google so, Frog's not going for either. Surprisingly, e either player sniping each other's uh, constructors out is very important. And that, so yeah, that, Google, that gives Failthus the advantage early on. I mean, five medals so far, and on top of that, the Reclaim hasn't even been taken yet. Not to mention, wind generators are very easy for Failthus to make, just like Google Frog, although, of course, before losing the, the losing the constructor, but still, both players can easily step up with wind generators on the top of these giant ridges. Yeah, that, along with um, all the metal from Rock Reclaim. So yeah, that is... Well, that's Failthos taking that back, although no further fleas, no further fleas. There's one outside of this ridge, but none inside, and the defender should be up in time. The flea's not looking like it's moving in. And there is the ground switch! Failthos actually not building too much in the air, but did force Google Frog to a lot of defenders. Not a lot of tarantulas, though, so I don't think that's going to be a big problem. Those glaives aren't going to be able to break the defenders too easily. Although, if the first choice is not glaive, but instead... No, the first choice is glaive. First thing in the build queue is three glaives. No Rockos, no Warriors, no Zeus. Nothing to really break down the defenders, just glaives. Bit of a shame that. Yeah, I think um It makes sense to go uh cloak bot against spiders in a lot of ways. Um because they have strong matchups. The mm. Rockos are quite good against a lot of spider units. But they're against defenders. He's going to be spamming defenders cause, cause, because 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 has gone air. Mm -hmm. The rockers can be all right. I mean, I, that's kind of what I expect. But I'd go for I warriors he, first. But yeah, rockers should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Google Frog. Google Frog is in a good position to adapt to this ground switch. That's the thing. And actually, Google Frog still not taking the back that quickly. Failed us ahead economically. Remains ahead economically, building up some solar collectors, trying to deal with that. But ultimately, <laughs> Failthos does spot this out. I mean, sorry, Google Frog does spot this out, though. I should point out, Fail Google Frog has known about the Cloakabot factory this entire time. Because mm. there was a flea over there that was scouting this entire thing out. So Google Frog this knows. This is the advantage. 
It's the advantage of that factor, isn't it? Oh yeah. Although Cloaky has the same advantage as the Gremlins, but definitely with spiders you have the fleas that are much cheaper. Mm -hmm. And it, you want to make them as raiders anyway. But they quickly become redundant as raiders, so you just set them off as scouts. Yeah, they become a map hack. <laughs> yeah. Felthas is, um, sort of, oh, he took out the flea finally. But Felthas is, um, transition completely out of air now. He's not even building any more bombers, and he only has one. So... And that one is going around the back, too. It looks like it's hunting for metal extractors, of which it'll find none. And continuing yeah. to hunt around... Actually, they'll find one. Goes far around the back. Tarantula does spot it, but that's... That's quite the range on it. Oh, is it gonna spot that? Is it gonna get... It's Actually, he's in a bad position. Two more tarantula shots, that'll go down. That bomber is... Oh my goodness, that bomber's gonna die. Needs to mm. kill that weaver in the meantime. No. Oh, no, no, never mind. Too late. Just get out of there. It's getting out alive, yeah. Actually, is it getting it, out alive? It's... With, nope, no, it's not. Nope. Oh, it needed to kill something. Kill the weaver, kill the metal extractors. That was... Yeah, with with one that with sucks. one bomber there, that was sort of a very light amount of harassment you can do. And him making glaives is a very poor idea because venoms they're so strong against glaives. Yeah, they're, they're one of the strongest things you can you can you can have against glaives actually. So him knowing. Sacked off your mic. Sorry, but um, him knowing what matchup he's going into and doing it is it okay now? Uh, it was just. I think. I think it is. Okay. Well, him, him, him knowing the matchup he's going to um, uh, and choosing to go glaives into it is just really weird. I can see why he's choosing size. The three yeah, size makes off. sense. They're really good against defenders. It's a good idea. I, uh, well, if he splits them up, they'll be even better. Like one scythe per defender. That would work extremely well in this situation. Yeah, and they can also take out metal extractors. Although, They're really yeah, stealthy. That's not even going for the defenders, is it? It's ignoring those completely. In fact, it looks like he's ignoring those metal extractors completely and trying to scout out. Failthus wants to know what get the lay of the land first. Very good choice there, I think. There's yeah, time I think to do so. You could so afford and... to send at least one, and it'd also be distracting to send one to the north and take out those two metal extractors. Yeah. But you can see Google Frog, and I don't know whether he scout this or not. He's building like the end game thing. He's building the uh, missile silo already. Oh yeah, there's a missile silo. I thought it was a geothermal for some reason. Yeah, yeah that's. That's been started up, and those sides, they haven't been spotted, but I think they've been predicted somewhere. I think these Venoms are... The Venoms are suspicious. there to... They're fighting the Roccos, oh, so yeah, they're that's getting it. into position there to stop the Roccos from coming around. Okay, because it yeah. happens to be in a bad spot for the sides. The sides... Still trying to scout on. It looks like... is I think Veltas is trying to go for a comm snipe. I, I think he is too, yes, Yeah, that's, but... that's exactly what's happening. Oh, wow, it'll and, work. Oh, that... Uh, is that going to work? No, that's not going to work. Oh, no, so close is. too. Although the, the Rockos will finish it off. The Venoms did stun the commander and the Rockos finish it off. And actually one of the sides survives long enough to... Oh, it doesn't quite kill the Metal Extractor, but still the Rocko follow-up will do it. The Rockos are all trapped now in this huge ball. You can see the power of Venoms that they could stun out this many Rockos. But there's yeah. enough Rockos coming on the side. You can see a huge spam of Rockos. This and up to the north too. Battlefast is defenders. getting his Reclaim on now. He's really heavily going for a claim, and this is this is the counter to Rockos. They're basically the only counter to Rockos in the fa factory, which is the crab. The crab, which is neat, a really good hard counter. Oh, look at this! Isn't this is cute? He's pushing the crab forward using using a venom. I don't know, I don't if, know that, if he did that, that on purpose. matter though. That's still pushing it out of defense mode. Yeah, I mean, it, it did. speeds it up, but, but Google Frog needed that. He needed that crab to finish exactly when it did. It's look look what it's doing to the Rockos. Like oh, one yeah. shot just. Demolishing them. He, he, oh, there's more coming around the north. The north one. He needs ones. This to stabilize badly. And I don't know if it's going to do that. That north is going to be gone, though. Failthos is going to destroy the entire northern expansion. And the main base getting a lot more. Raven's being built up to deal with that crab as well. I mean. It's a good idea. It's, it'll only work when it's moving, but still, those Rockos have taken out the north. They're probably going to go down, but looks like Failthos is very nicely spreading out the Rockos, making sure only one is lost per shot. And otherwise, yeah. retreating. You can see Google Frog hasn't lost that much because he still has Reclaim, he can still Reclaim his commander. I mean, Lizard is the major thing, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm sending in Fleas now to distract the Rockos, which is, isn't bad, but um, eh, they're still a... not doing much damage. Yeah, it's not. It's buying time. That's the important thing. It's not actually losing too much in metal, but it is buying time. It's possibly getting them into bad positions for the crab to take out. Yeah. Failthus, you can see, has um, uh, only two metal extractors outside of his main base, though, beyond his choke point. So, Google Frog hasn't actually that lost that much. What he's lost is mostly momentum and advantage because Felthus's economic lead right now is coming from his geothermal and his overdrive, and from uh, 
Google Frog, it's and, basically wind generators. And from generators. the reclaim. Um, right now, Google Frog has not really reclaimed nearly as much. Uh, he should really have spiders working on the reclaim right now. While Failfast has reclaimed almost all... Or he, he's reclaimed one of his mounds. I suppose they're mostly even on reclaim, actually. So that's still a factor that could come into play. But uh, as far as metal extractors go, um, Failfast is, is relying on overdrive now to give them the economic advantage. And, and um, so they can. Google Frog is, is, is still not finished his first geothermal. And actually, Google Frog going for... Wait. Gunship and air? I don't understand. Why are they going gunship and air? I suppose he wants fighters and brawlers. It makes sense. Brawlers are really strong, okay, and he needs fighters against the enemy air. I mean, personally, I just rely on tarantulas, but uh, I can I can see... Uh, I, I guess he doesn't want to rely on um, tridents. It's a weird pick, but... Uh, yeah, especially... Yeah. Oh, wow, with sharpshooter in here as well. I guess he feels he has enough economy, and he really needs to get his reclaim on. He needs to climb not just the rocks, but his commander. There's a ton of metal in the middle. There's, you know, 1.5k uh, uh, just just in the in the middle of the, with the wrecks. Not even counting the um uh, the not counting the rocks, yeah. The rocks, which are you know each hill is 500 metal. You know. Mhm. Mm and it looks like that reclaim is about to be gone on, though Failthoss going around the side, and if they spawn out this Weaver, we'll be able to stop it right in his tracks. Not going for that, though. Going instead, it looks like, for the Metal Extractors. Yep, going straight for one of the Metal Extractors. Takes out a Metal Extractor. Two metal per second down, and Failthoss at this point still double the economy. Getting an Eraser up as well. Huh. Eraser on Rocco. I guess they want to make sure it's harder to dodge. Put a bit of surprise attack in there. Yeah, it's... I think he's... Gonna try and get something close to the crab, maybe, or possibly. Oh, he might the try and sneak the Rocco's through. Not gonna work though. I mean, get behind the crab. Maybe. So not all the Rocco's are cloaked though. Failthouse really needs to get them moving together. Yeah, it won't work at all because there's fleas in the choke points. He's done oh, yeah. this as an anti anti scythe measure deliberately. He's put fleas in there, which is it's one of the best things you can do actually against um uh, uh, against cloakers. Just put down a, a line of fleas. So whatever he does with this um, uh, eraser, it's probably not going to work. Perhaps, unless the rockers, the first few rockers, just go in for the sake of going in, though they'll be torn apart by the crab. But still, if they mm. go in, hmm, maybe it might work. Personally, the way I play this map is just to um, oh, he has a thunderbird. That's interesting. Uh, fail fast does. The way yeah. I play this map is actually to get a geothermal power plant as much as fast as possible. Uh, primarily consider think. Uh, Primarily, I take the middle hill with defenses and crabs because I do play spider on this map. And um, but worry mostly about taking my own choke point. Don't worry about taking more than fifty percent of the map because as long as I have the middle hill, I'm you know preventing the enemy from taking too much. Yeah. And then I morph a geothermal power plant um, to a mojo and build up more for them, make tons of overdrive. Then just use missile silo to just bomb the hell out of the enemy base. And it looks like well, the missile silo yeah. is not really an option, but do still have the bombing going on. Brawler... Brawler not able to actually do much. Not, hasn't been able to move forward yet. And it looks like the Eraser attack is going in. Won't be much good as an Eraser attack, but it will at least be a fairly powerful attack with Rocco's. Failthoss still does have 11k metal of units versus 7k metal from Google Frog. Still yeah, a lot does, to work with. Yeah, he definitely... His economic advantage is really paying off. He has both his geothermal power plants up. He has, up, he has his grid is entirely corrected. It's on connected. It's on green overdrive right now. Google Frog has no overdrive. He has a single solar power generator powering a single metal extractor. That's the full extent of his overdrive. Yeah. Thus is also taking his Ford ex extractors. He's taking the two side ones, which is the ones he wiped out from Google Frog, um, which Google Frog has still not taken. Google Frog has finally taken, taken his... Um, He's taking his commander wreck and what have you. Mm -hmm. But uh, Google Frog is taking the air advantage, though. He's sniping out these um, fighters, which is what he needs to be able to use his um, uh, brawlers effectively. Yeah, but still, that eraser is able to come in effectively, and that does mean that the crab has no easy way of getting through this. Not to mention, ooh, the fighter's walking right over that, too. Although, unfortunately, it's both really hard to get up that hill. Down. Ooh, that was bad. Mm, he's, he's grouped his warriors way too much right now. Yeah, but they can still take a hit from the crab at least. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're just not even going to care. He needs to, need to recloak and get them out of there, yeah. Um, Google Frog's actually it's blind finder but firing into into it, so that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it got got the target in the warrior now, but yeah, that was blind fire yeah. for a while. 
Yeah, the, the, the Brawler is going to be really good against these Warriors. It's going to completely hold them off, I think. Um, but there are Bombers specifically coming in, as well as Fighters. The bomb out bombers the Brawler, out yeah. Brawl. Yeah. Because you can bomb gunships. It's... Zero K is flexible like that. <laughs> I learned. Maybe too flexible. I think, honestly, I think um, Ravens are just too flexible a unit. You know, they, they, they can raid, they can do everything. Yeah, I remember when I started playing this game, and big Phoenixes were such were the, the real big bomber that you'd use, and Ravens were not really much of a thing. And then Ravens we have a big a thing. force of Rockos, but fortunately, oh, you see this? He's put the um, crab on a spire instantly, <laughs> just whoop, straight up in the air, which means it, the Rockos can't hit it. it oh, look at the range it's gaining. It's gaining. Oh my God! Look at the. It's gaining so much range from this. So oh, it, as wow. he retreats, he just gets more and more range. Uh, this this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is pure Google Frog. Google Frog, you know, just snap using terraforming, instantly knowing, you know, how to get an advantage from it. Wow. Okay. Of course, Wyvern coming in here. If that came in here, I don't know if it will, but if it did, that would rather break the advantage pretty heavily. Then the grab would have to climb all the way up the spire once again, and it would be massively pen penalized for moving. Yeah, Google Frog is really at a disadvantage, and it's mostly economic at this point. Um, Fail has, has trouble moving in because he has using mostly cloak units, which mm -hmm. um, almost all of them die to the splash of a crab, especially a crab on the hill. There's nothing you can do about that almost. He needs to switch to. You can right now he's actually building a scorpion in his base, so he's switching to a, a, a mech strider strategy. Yeah. So he, he needs something heavy to break the enemy base. Scorpion's good. It can actually just walk straight over the hills. So I, I think that's why he's building it. But, yeah, uh, probably he, he follow it up with the cloaky units here. He can't crush Google Frog right now, but he's preventing Google Frog from taking the two, the four mexes to each side uh, that uh, that Faelthas has, and Google Frog is just not investing nearly enough into energy. I don't think he realizes that Faelthas is so ahead on economy. Um, he's st still just trying to defend himself because he sees this big army uh, Faelthas yeah. has. But the reason he has the big army is not because he's been over investing in it, but actually because he's had an economic lead for quite some time. I think Google Frog's probably wisened up to that, though. Just given the fact that we do see... Well, the Nampomon was coming in, so nothing really... Okay, I guess nothing really actually shows that at this point. I think Google Frog is more just concerned about getting into this army first. Once the Nampomon bombers come through... Oh, and actually don't do much. Yeah, they bomb too far forward and the units move back. It's, it's hard to use Nampomon bombers. It's something they often do is they bomb... Uh, it's, it's something that Lico originally wanted them to do, where they bomb as little as they can where they just bomb the minimum and then they pull back so they don't get too far into enemy AA. But they only save a very small amount of distance into enemy AA and if you bomb in front of something that's pulling back, the bombs are just all fall short, fall short. Yeah, it looks like another shot coming in here, which doesn't do much again. And that's, that has a whole bomber out. Two bombers out, my goodness, that was, oh, that was not worth it. And the scorpion going along the center, of course, being cloaked out, is not even gonna be spotted until it gets anywhere near there. And probably at the same time, like I said, from the north we'll get the units coming south. And another crab on the hill, so two hills of crabs. Definitely the tall one should be taken out first. Yeah, Google Frog's working on his second geothermal plant. Um, Faelthas is only just, he's, he's still morphing his, he, he's, he's just starting to morph his, it's almost finished. Once that morph finishes, you can see the overdrive's gonna kick into yellow probably, because it's almost there right now. And he's, Faelthas is even using, um, He's even using uh, pylons at this point, uh, mm -hmm. so his economic advantage is just taking is just getting to getting more and more. Oh ahead. yeah, metal. You see, Google Frog is on by ten by then. Is is on five factories by this point, you know. So he's just trying to have every weapon in his arsenal he possibly can to sort of stall for time. But he needs to be building up his economy while he's doing that. That's the second time I've had to resize this factory panel. I don't know if you're yeah. watching the stream, but I have that panel of factories. For every player, mm -hmm. I'm going to resize it because Google Frog went for five factories. Yeah, this is something oh, Google Frog Oh, nice has done, Thunderbird. But no follow up. Uh, Google no, Frog's actually put, put, put he, he's, he's, he's coming up against the Scorpion now, mm -hmm. and he's using fleas everywhere to spot out any cloak units. It'll be interesting to see whether he can stop the Scorpion because the Scorpion. Don't know. Just, yeah, it with seems... the backup from the army, I don't think he has any chance. That crab on the hill is incredible. It's going to be so hard to break, but it will. Scorpion, the scorpion if it can, can re -cloak, do it. Yeah, if it can recloak, it can do it. It's it's already Actually, lost half its health. Can't re -cloak. If it can't recloak, then the rock will just be able to just fire at it. And if it can recloak, that means that it's going to be able to get up close enough. And it is able to get up close enough. And that crab, that's about to get stuck. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. Weapon, yeah, 
So that crab is out, and I think that's going to be game. I think game one goes to fail to us here, though. Nice disarm on the scorpion. It's going to be out of commission for the rest of this battle. Yeah, I think Google Frog did an excellent job holding here against the superior economy, but he needed to... I think he could have afforded to use less, um, just have the singles up on the spire, um, and maybe even worry less about holding Phaelthos off and more about getting his economy into speed because geothermals pay off so excellently. If he had just focused on morphing those and getting his getting a bit of overdrive economy and building both of his geothermal power plants, he was behind on that the whole game. Um, Phaelthos, yeah, is just, he's building a super fusion now. It's, it's unnecessary, but... what? Oh yeah, there's a Singu right there. Singular yeah, and he's got, two, he's got two striders out, which is just so far beyond anything Google Frog has. Yeah, and down goes one of the geos. The other geo about to go down. So yeah, Google Frog. Bit surprised Google Frog hasn't surrendered at this point. And there, that crab definitely goes. I think Google Frog's probably planning something like you know he's, he he wants to put all these crabs on spires and see how long they can last and see how hard it is to dislodge them and things like that. See how much damage you can get. Google Frog's one of those players, and I think it's 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 always it's gonna be fun to do this if you know you you know you've lost if you've got some. Something you can see how much cost you can make, something cute you've done, <laughs> to see um, how efficient it can be. Well, but, if you're the uh, one building yeah. the, helping build the game, then yes, that makes sense. And from dead yeah. curiosity, oh, I, I, I can I see. Think, I think sometimes even... Um, okay, there's the GG. There's the GG. That was game one. Well, it was 20 minutes, not quite 30 minutes as I predicted, but then again, that was... That was Field Devices. That's a pretty defensible map. Yeah, I, I think... Um, <laughs> I think uh, you don't get Scorpion versus Crab in many um, one versus one matchups, so it's it's always sort of interesting to see how the dynamic plays out. That's true, and it seems to play out in favor of Scorpions. But hey, that Spire wasn't a bad choice. Yeah, yeah, it, it, I think it it totally stalled the um the, the choice of um uh, cloak factor there. But I think one of the other problems Google Frog made is he he tried to switch into a Brawlers. I mean. Brawlers were the dominant meta in the two versus two. Brawlers were really strong. People have been complaining about brawlers mm -hmm. in team games and things. But they were nerfed. This is the first time we've seen them in this tournament. Yeah, well, they were pretty heavily nerfed, and honestly, that was that was a mm. huge deal. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. But um, I'm not sure what Google Thug was thinking. I think the enemy was already air, going gunships into brawlers for that, then going planes as well. I, th I think it's spreading yourself too thin when you're behind on economy and stuff. You're spreading yourself out to too many techs when you should just focus on holding, getting your economy up, and then honestly, going for missile silo or some sort of game ending choice, which I think he probably wanted to put brawlers on the hills and get the, the advantage from the extra range. Yeah, well, and, he, okay. Google Frog was going for missile silo, so in that regard, that was mm. the correct choice. It just didn't get pulled off because it got punished. It, it, it was too early, yeah, and... Um, he oh. wasn't capable of defending it. And we have failed us coming here on the original <laughs> comment catcher. The less pretty I, one. I, I think he's, it, Google Frogs picked this map um, hoping Hover to fight against Hover. Hovercraft. I yeah, I think he, he's, he's, he, he, he wants to sort of test it out, test out the meta, because Failthus has been doing uh, Hovercraft a lot. He wants to play Hopper versus Hover and see how it goes. I think it's, a, it's a bit of a shame that Google Frog has not chosen to, in a map where he knows pretty much that he's facing either Hover or Planes, I think those are the two choices here, basically. If you believe that Hover is dominant in the meta, um, yeah, you know, you could you could say you could make the argument that actually Hovercraft July has meta. maybe maybe Looster's tank or whatever, yeah. That's but if you really believe they are, I think Hovercraft and Planes is your only two options because I mean Planes can get the get the advantage on a nice large map like this. But um, yeah, I think it's a bit of a shame that he didn't choose to do this matchup using non Hovercraft to because Failfast has been. Building, building hovercrafts the entire thing, and, and and been saying that hovercraft are st even though we know them after the July tournament, um, they're still still too strong. He's saying they're they're, they're just they're just way too strong, and I'm going to keep building them. Mm. <laughs> so it, it, it'd be a shame. It's a bit of a shame that that, that Google Frog chooses a mirror matchup here, but uh, it, it I, I think hovercraft mirror matchup as much as oh no, you know, single factory dominant. I like hovercraft mirror matchup. I think it's interesting. I love seeing the halberds from that other game. So yeah, that that yeah, other game did kind of give it a bit of a. It kind of helped sell the idea, but at the same time, <clears> you don't want just hovercraft mirror. The fact yeah. that the hovercraft mirror is a thing is okay, but the fact that hovercraft mirror, if it's the only thing, that'd be boring. Yeah, one of the things I was saying earlier was that um, it only has really three units. I mean, plus the halberds sometimes. Yeah. Usually in mirror matchups. Oh, yeah, dagger may scalpel. Oh. That's it. 
Yeah, and, and they're such strong units, and they're, and they're fun units and interesting units. I mean, Dagger Micro is really interesting and you know, that sort of stuff, but um, yeah, I honestly think that uh, we should continue to nerf daggers because I think they're the key of the factory. Because, I mean, all factories have like a strong midline kind of thing like Scavel Mouse. Sc yeah. Scavel, Scavel, Scavel Mouse? Scavel Mouse. <laughs> um, Scavel Mouse. De yeah, but they're Glaive, slow, Rocco. they're expensive, they're vulnerable to certain yeah. things. I think it's really the strength of the dagger. I think, honestly, um, we need to do what I was saying uh, last tournament and um, add an extra, uh, add some extra units to Hovercraft, add an extra Raider unit, which is, you know, specialize the uh, the dagger towards uh, either anti-unit or anti-building, mm -hmm. and add an extra Raider unit in, which is you know, a bit higher weight, and you need to sort of mix it a little bit. and So there's a vulnerability that can be exploited. That wouldn't be a bad idea, because daggers are... Daggers are just odd to play against. I mean, they either... I feel like they either do really well or they completely collapse. And it doesn't feel like there's any yeah. middle ground in the way they work. I think this is one of the reasons why um, sometimes Hovercraft don't seem that strong. Because you get behind on your dagger count and you can't get ahead. You, you just... you die. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But but if you're playing them well, you can... They, just, they can just be devastating, which I think is a little bit tall or nothing. And that's that's what I mean exactly. That's that's my point. So hopefully, I think they should probably be anti. I don't say anti-building specialist, just because their weapon does feel like it's a bit more suited for smashing through a line of buildings. Because the units don't line up all that often. I mean, when they ball up, it's kind of useful, but they don't line up in such a way that you can easily flank it. Units like glaives and things often you will if you if you're getting big masses of glaives fighting big gla masses of uh, daggers, oh, true, you, yeah. the splash damage will come into effect. Versus something like scorches, which are both expensive and take up a lot of space and turn slowly, so they tend to sp spread out. You generally want to spread them out because they can't shoot over each other, etc., etc. Um, it doesn't come up half as much. Yeah. So yeah, they're sort of ambiguous units. They got the high alpha, which makes them good mix at uh, sniping metal tractors and sniping actually. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I mean. That, that's what it was. That's what it is. Rather than that, makes me think that they'd be better anti building specialists. Mm. And the other one should but be the, the it also unit. allows them to snipe one, a few units at a time retreat, snipe a few units at a time retreat. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I think we'll see over the course of these next few matches where the hovers are. I, I, if if Google Frog plays hovers <laughs> for all the rest of these matchups because he thinks it's the only way he can be fail fast when he's the, when Google Frog is top of the ladder right now. I know. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about that. <laughs> Although it looks like Google Frog taking a pretty strong. <laughs> Position in the center, although Failthos having to defend. Failthos going for the standard defensive style that they've been going for, and Google Frog countering with pretty much the same, while Failthos going along and a raid on the less defended side as well. Yeah, this pretty is pretty big be really raid, effective. too. Oh my. This is going to be. He doesn't see it. No, Google Frog does not see it coming at all. Or just he's coming now. It's saw not coming it on radar. Ago. Yeah, he just saw it. He just saw it coming in, and he's not going to be fast enough. No, uh, it's a question so of whether Failthos. Yeah, he's taken his damage, he's taken out, um, yeah, not very much, but he's pulling back now, he's pulling back on the wrong angle. Oh, now. He's pulling that, back on an angle. that was a good, re yeah, no, oh, just, nice little Google yeah. Frog though. No, that's still good by Google Frog, I think, because that's still two to one. Mm. That's still... It's okay. I don't know, two daggers it's, for it's, one, I mean, it's admittedly the Metal Shark and the Lotus are gone as well, but that's easily rebuilt. Mm. I think Google Frog defended that alright, that could be a lot worse if... Oh yeah. If Balefast had plowed through... Um, taken out the laser tower, then gotten into the... Uh, I suppose it's solar panels mostly, which you can't really kill, because daggers have a lot of upfront damage, but they don't have sustained damage, so they can't really kill solar collectors. Yeah, well, it looks like we have another setup here, and Google Frog's forces have been split. Mm -hmm. Failthoth's getting a nice local advantage. Google Frog forced to retreat. Although, partially forced to retreat, looks like... No, is Google Frog going to go for it? I think Google Frog's going to go for it. Yeah, they are going for the north. They're going for another raid, and Failthoth will not actually... Well, they might see it coming. Failthos did see on radar where those daggers were going broadly, but I don't think they got the best idea of where exactly those daggers were going. It wasn't yeah. I don't think Google Frog was really juking him out or really making it clear that to the radar that oh hey these daggers are going south, and then Failthos goes oh hey wait a sec no they're actually going north. Yeah, Google Frog is actually and um uh, splitting his forces right now, which is really clever because Failthos is sending oh no he's splitting his yeah. own forces, but Failthos yeah actually Failthos we'll has see how really gotten back. I think Failthos was tired earlier today because that is that's Failthos getting get better at the multitasking. Felthas is playing really well. Google Frog should have plowed in there. He doesn't know, but all these metal extractors in the rear are totally vulnerable, and four is enough to snipe them using drive bys. He could have kept moving through there, sniped out four, five, six metal extractors, which yeah. would have been definitely worth it. 
But um, wait, Google Frog's moving yeah, all the way back. Yeah, defended now. excellently that's, there. Google Frog is fully retreating. Wow, that's way too far, unfortunately. I mean, he can't. Google Frog can't really tell, but we can. So I guess we have a little bit of an unfair advantage. Yeah, so in our, in our unfair doing... judgment, we're judging Google Frog, yeah. making horrible. I mean, sorry. He probably expected a laser tower in the rear. Oh yeah, that um, makes sense. I and mean, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't expect them to all be naked because four is not enough for a laser tower when there are other daggers in the area. And you can see that Google Frog is actually expanding a very different style to Failfast. He's expanding in a line towards the middle, using mostly his commander, while Failfast is expanding sort of in a horizontally, ball, yeah. Keep, yeah, keeping things more compact. Uh, oh, Google, Google Frog is losing, lost those, its, ah, yeah. losing all the daggers. That was not the way to go, unfortunately. He'd already sent the force along there. He must know that Failthus has something in, prepared to intercept that. Failthus is sending in his own raid now, but yep. Google Frog has the south. defenses. Yeah, yeah, he, with he the knows. Lotus. With the Lotus, it'll work. But and actually, not just the Lotus. The daggers were split up, and Google Frog able to take advantage of the local advantage. Nice, nicely done by Google Frog. This is a really well done defense. Yeah, this is um, Failthus is again splitting his attention. He's also attacking from the other direction. Um, which could work out, but um, this is the direction that Google, yeah. Google Frog's um, daggers are pumping from the factory. So he has constant reinforcements from that direction and while he sends his other units to defend the left flank. So Google Frog is again defended really well. Yeah. We haven't seen also, much movement here. We've seen a lot of really good defenses. Yeah, but look at the main base. There's Google Frog's gone for a bit of an air switch for scouting and going for Valkyries. Looks like a mace drop is incoming. That's maybe what he was planning on the other map. I saw him make, make a Vindicator. Maybe he was planning on a crab drop or something, or some sort of end game thing. I can see how you think you could finish the map game. You're going to finish the game. Um, that would be a good choice. But he he always needed it for defense, and why he never went for that. That would explain the double factory thing, which is what he's doing now. Yeah, mm -hmm. a mace drop. That makes perfect sense. Wow, that's very clever, actually. But Felfas already has fighters. That's true. However, I don't think it's going to be enough. a lot of defenders, as we know. That okay, they do build a lot of defenders, but there is space to put it. You can drop it right in the back, take out the lotuses, and just rip everything apart. I think that's what Google Frog is gonna do. Yeah, Google Frog just scouting out with some dagger, trying to figure out what's going on around the back, see what's happening, and then work from there. It'll be another looks like about minute or so before the mace drop is complete. We'll see yeah, though. it's a really, really interesting um, strategy he's going for here, and I think it could really work. Um, if he chooses to go over the crater on the right-hand side and then straight for the base, but um, he's sort of encouraging, in, in way, he's encouraging Failthus to build defenses up, up in this direction because he has uh, the daggers there attacking. But he is managing to take out two um, constructors, which is nice. Definitely good to do. At the very least, it'll prevent further defenses from being built. But there are a ton of ton of laser towers here now. Yeah, so. there are. But still, the Mesa should be able to break it's through that or get through the weak spots. Because now Google mm. Fog knows there's a weak spot right by the like, the pair of lotuses and then right next to them. Like, there's a weak spot, and that's going to be fairly me meaningful, I think. Google Frog catches on that at least. Yeah, Google, Google Frog is uh, having to get his commander sniped now, though. Yeah, that's not going to go too well. But he might kill a lot of daggers, so. Oh, nice! That well, that slows down the raid quite a lot. Opens up. Pretty much kills it dead, but there's maces coming in. Which yep, there's. Means he there it is. Needs, he, but he has ravens already, so he's prepared. Well, the maces aren't switch. a problem. It's the mace drop is coming in, going right oh, along that right. side. That mace drop is coming Failthus at the same time. Maces in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a dagger trying time. to go through. Actually, doing a pretty good job getting through. And there's a naked expand over the southwest. Failthos is going to be able to take that out without issue, because basically air superiority is Failthos is right now. But over to the Let's northeast. See, he, yeah, here's, here's the um the fighter's position, so this drop could be really successful. Oh, never mind. The metal uh, extractor destruction killed that. Goes down. Killed that dagger. And there it goes, dropping not in the oh, weakest the base, spot. Middle though. of the base. There we go. That's that's what Google Frog needs, and that will well, kill the solar. The fusion. Okay, the airplane factory is going to go down. The fusion plant that needs to go down. And he's only got daggers at defense, which are obviously useless against Ooh, um, Nice races. shot there. Yeah, Kills out really the strong. So that's one fusion down. I don't think the second one's going to go down, though. Yeah, but I that mean, that was might. worth it. That was worth it. Because um, uh, if you put, take out an enemy's energy economy, you really put them behind on the map with this many metal extractors. But, um, yeah, those two maces coming in for defense. Um, 
really helped. Google Frog's focusing also wasn't as good. He could have mm. taken out the laser powers a little bit faster. Although he could have taken down down the um, fusion reactors actually. Fusion reactor yeah. a little both, bit faster as well. Both fusion reactors would have been the best option because at that point, and nice look, Google Frog, nice snap terraform on that fusion reactor. Make sure it's not as easy to take out. But yeah, both yeah, fusion yeah, reactors have gone down. That second one's right by a bunch of caretakers. That would have completely annihilated Fail Toss's production. Even without killing the factory, destroying those caretakers would have been huge. And that was not yeah, done. Yeah, it's really good. And and now, Fail Fast, that was uh, that, that big attack through the center there uh, mm -hmm. was um, just it's straight into the base. You should, can't do that unless you're going to win. Because look at the army advantage that, that Google Frog has right now. Fail Fast has nothing. Army yes. advantage? Oh, okay, yeah. By, yeah, I guess army advantage by unit types. Actually, by cost, Fail Fast is 2,000 metal ahead. For cost yeah, of but, army, but yes, you're right. It's mostly but he has like four and maces in the middle of the map, which I mean, to be fair, there's lots of stardust, which are going to be really hard for the for the daggers to break through. But those maces, they cannot react to the the daggers. If he uses his daggers to go around the side, around um, yeah, uh, he'd need to he need to really get around the side there though, and 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 get past all these stardust which are coming up. But Google Frog is, yeah, he's doing an all right job of securing territory. Um, Felthas still has more territory, though. Felthas is far more Felthas, economy. Felthas, yeah, yeah. Felthas is actually still ahead. It's it's not going well. That that mace drop didn't do a terrible job, but that second fusion reactor needed to have gone down. Yeah, and Google Frog has a ton of ton of metal extractors on his eastern side, which those maces just swept swept through. The ones I was pointing out earlier, which I said, uh, should be bombed in the middle, mm. and he needs to be building more bombers right now if he's not going to him. If he's going to keep continue to rely on daggers, which is Fine idea to continue to do. He needs to bomb those maces. No, it's like Ravagers are the option. Ravagers are the way to go forward here, says Google Frog. Right, he wants to take out the. Um, that makes sense. He wants to take out the Stardust and things. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, the ma those four maces are coming in for a round two on the assault there in the southwest, which is going to be fairly effective. Actually, it's going to be very effective. That's going to take on the entire southwest. In fact, I think Feltos is going to be able to take over the southwest. And yeah, um, that's. Not good for Google Frog. Yeah, Google Frog not having his commander in the middle, not oh having um, constructors. He's actually falling pretty quickly behind. He's not expanding anymore. He's only constructors in his base. He's and not reclaiming. Half he's the metal territory to maces. Yeah, and he's on half metal right now. That was a. It was a really nice attack there in the base to sort of like finish the game. But I think he invested a little bit too much in it. Not so much that he lost too much. I mean, he did lose quite a bit. But in that. He put a lot of his eggs in that basket. He didn't. He yeah. was at the same time. He was not dealing with and didn't execute the maces well that were going through on the left side. He was not building up enough bombers and getting enough air superiority to bomb them out. Yeah, like if Although gotten now rid of, he has enough. He's getting rid of both factories or getting rid of the caretakers, getting rid of the second fusion plant, that would have done it because that would have at least slowed things down so much that Google Frog would have been able to just get the production advantage and it wouldn't have mattered. But now Google Frog's losing his um his ravens. He's losing the ravens to um. Uh, He's losing the ravens to the uh, swifts, so uh, he needs to, he needs to keep bombing and bombing and bombing the maces because the mate there's four maces coming along, along the bottom side now, which five maces. can out through his base. Five? There's oh four. no, sorry, yeah, four. Sorry, three along the bottom, and there's five in the center as well as follow up. Yeah, and flanking yeah. those ravagers that are going to go for the stardust. Yeah, the ravagers are good. I mean, they're going to they can definitely take down the stardust uh, with minimal losses, just only losing one, and then clean start cleaning yeah, up metal extractors. But he's just over he's, here. Not the maces work. are just plowing through him. That's maces, not going to work at all. Yeah. Actually, the Lotus is doing a decent job defending against these, but even then, he's he's really spamming a lot of bombers now. That's what he needs to. He's spamming out bombers for defense and constructors while his while his Ravager pushes on. He's pulled all of Failthas's units back. He's five maces. He's, he's six or seven now. They're yeah. all in the middle of the map. They're not pushing in. He needs to expand right now, reclaim right now, get his eco energy economy yeah, going. Get the entire southeast side, or south side, the yeah. entire south third of the map. Get While he makes the best of these ravages, he just, honestly, he needs to run these ravages around as much as possible, just to keep the maces chasing them, because they're much faster than the maces. Yeah, they're and trying they to, but the somewhat. daggers are blocking. Like, the daggers are actually yeah. operating as pathing blocks. That's all they're doing. They're running interference. That's it. And they're doing a great job of it, too. That killed three ravagers right there, because the daggers are running interference. Yeah, Google Frog has enough um, bombers now that maces are no longer a problem for him, but here come the Swifts. He needs a way to clear out these Swifts. He needs some ground AA. Yeah, well, surprisingly, too, because he's playing a hover. He's playing a hover, get some flails. Thing that you have. Yeah. 
a really useful option there, but no, don't see that. Or crashers. He had a big, yeah, he had a big line of defenders to retreat to, he'd be alright. I think if his commander was still alive, by now he would have a huge line of defenders, but he just mm -hmm. doesn't have that, so he's just he's bleeding these ravens. Yeah, and that is unfortunate, because at this point, what, there's three, you know, one raven, there's a single raven that belongs to, wait, yeah, a single raven belonging to Goofrog, the other half dozen belonging to Failthos. I think Feldus is going to go for the killing blow here with these maces. Like yeah, that Ravager I think, didn't um, deal enough damage. The maces are just yeah. Goofrog just throws in the towel. We are on to game three. Currently two, two oh, oh for Feldus. That's really impressive. Yeah, that good job, Feldus. I feel like Feldus has been practicing his hovercraft a lot, and he's picking it every matchup he's can. And he's practicing yeah. his defense style, his expand, and yeah, he's going as I said with the very. Sort of typical style, and Google Frog, I think he wanted to see whether he can beat him in his own game, whether he can beat him at this practiced, methodical, hovercraft um, defense expand game. But Google and, wasn't um, playing the defense expand game the same way. It wasn't playing the well, defense no, expand game. With his commander way. in the middle, he was. Oh, he, yeah, was that's true. he was pushing very hard through. He lost his commander, and that's when he lost. He, he just fell behind, and he, he's like, I'm going to lose unless I sort of do more naked expand and stuff and his defenses weren't staying up. And the thing about a defender line is as soon as it starts to fall, you're rebuilding from scratch and one defender sucks. A line of defenders mm -hmm. is amazing and you can just keep adding defenders on. But once that's broken, once it's broken down, um, it's very hard to set it back up again, especially later, as it gets later and later in the game, you get more assaults, you get more artillery, you get more of these things. Wow, Google Frog is cycling through every single featured 1v1 map to figure out which one to play. Yeah, that's I think he, if position. he doesn't have... I think I think I think he probably expected this um this uh, tournament to be more of a walk because yeah three zero you want if you know you're going to get to the final and you think you're going to have stiff competition you want to have some things up your sleeve you want to have like say a water map and to have practiced it you want to have a strategy you're doing and he needs to he needs to either have something up his sleeve because I mean he played the July game he should know and he he's responsible for the nurse the last nurse to hovers and he would have practiced that out. Who would have practiced those nerfs against others to see whether they're um whether it's sufficient? Maybe maybe he just did a small nerf to see what would happen, and maybe this is uh, more sort of realizing what's going on, but um more sort of the realization of, of maybe the nerfs weren't enough. But you know, it's possible that um that was a mirror matchup, so it's possible that Failfast is just really practiced at this strategy, knows it really well, and Google Frog still has right. something up his sleeve which can beat a hovercraft start. Well, we'll Although see. This in... time... Wait, why is why is my win counter not? This time Failfast is, is not choosing Hovercraft start, he's choosing shield bots on a very small app. I can see why on this map. I think Google Frog's picked this map knowing that a Hovercraft start is something he can beat here. And that yeah. is why Failfast has picked shield. And that is going to be fairly damaging. Yeah, I think Google Frog probably expects a bot versus bot matchup here. Um, I don't think he's necessarily picked cloak bots thinking that he can beat hovercraft. Cloak bots are actually not that great against hovercraft, so I'm not, I, I think he was relying on the map choice. Mm -hmm. um, there's a dirtbag coming in which is scouted the factory by scouting out the, the raiders, uh, which is basically what you want with a dirtbag. A dirtbag, you don't really expect to do damage unless the enemy's doing something really you know, cheesy, like not building any defenses and yeah. then expanding and building off the pecans, which is, you know, happens sometimes, and dirtbags serve a purpose in stopping a player from doing that, but mostly it's just to expect it to detect the factory. And if an enemy sends a raider to stop your dirtbag, which is, you know, usually how a dirtbag dies is to an enemy raider, um, that's sufficient. That's enough yep. to see the factory choice. So. Well, this is our first time seeing shields, too. So one thing mm. to point out. Failsauce, I guess, must be fairly confident because shields have not been used a whole lot so far. Well, I think it's it's the player's style. I think from Failthas, he might be a shield specialist. Maybe that's his favorite bot, bot, bot factory. But every single time he's played a flat map, he's played Hovercraft because he's clearly very practiced with that mm -hmm. and very confident in it. Um, a lot of players have a fallback factory, a flat map factory, and a, and a um, bot factory that they sort of will prefer and tend towards. So I think that's it's, it says more about sort of the player's choices and um, uh, preferences. And then it does about the strength of the shieldbot factory, and and maybe some of the map choices too. I mean, shieldbots do have more trouble on larger maps, well, on a very small mm -hmm. map with uh, its uh, horizontal, uh, no, ver its vertical positions here. It's not diagonal positions. In diagonal positions, obviously, you have um, uh, a much longer rush distance. Where with right. this, it's very easy to project power into the middle of the map with a felon or a thug or ball, and it's very lumpy terrain as well, which helps.
But, um, yeah, we see sort of some harassment with raiders. Google Frog's definitely trying to take take sort of control of the map. He's, you can see he's, he's got this ring of, um, of raiders right now around, um, uh, around Felthus. But he's yeah. not engaging. Well, yeah, so anyone watching, sorry, this is this should be two. I don't know why the wind counter widget just kind of went weird, but yeah, this should be two wins for fail toss, not one, and my to fix it manually don't seem to be working. I'm not sure why. That's all right, Tom. Um, uh, you can see that Gilfrog has a definite plan for this map um, because he's making hammers, and you don't make hammers without a definite plan. What he's doing is actually he's, he's spamming defenders in the middle, uh, just above the enemy ba enemy base, and mm -hmm. this is the position. This is how you use artillery. You need a strong defensive position. Yeah, as we were saying artillery. before, you have to or, have. Or you need you can do it with riots as well. To be fair, we'll yeah, just I suppose, I suppose some warriors. But yeah, other than that, oh, it looks like this. I mean, on this map, given the fact that the center does have this nice big hill to it, you just stick your hammers up there, and that works. It looks like. Yeah. Wait, does Google know that's the commander? Oops. Yeah, Goofy totally knows what's going on. Like yeah, I think that um, th this is this is a really strong um, attack oh, here. You can see that hammers the are being at risk. They're going too far. They're going straight for the commander, and or they were at least. Yeah, they're right. Getting down yeah, the hill a lot though. Of, it's a ton of bandits on the left hand side around Google Frog's base, but he has a um, tick on top of his defender, so it'll depend on the micro. Um, Felthus doesn't want to move in yet. Maybe he's afraid of a tick, or he's just trying to gather his units up. So we'll see how well this tick works. I don't know. It's oh, it stuns uh, out the defender. I was worried it's, about it's, that. It's it's not enough, but um, Google Frog has enough glaives yeah, here. Enough follow up. But yeah, just stunning out two was enough. It was it was enough. It was not what you wanted, but it was yeah, it was more than enough. And then Falthas was retreating up a hill, which with the faster glaives managed them to catch it. So yeah, he dealt with that excellently, really mm -hmm. well. Even though his tick was not as devastating as it could be. It worked well enough, and then on top of that, there's now the Glaive follow-up and counter-attack, which is coming over the southwest, while Thug's trying to get rid of the hammers, but not all the defenders are certainly making that a problem. Simple Thug yeah. Lob Ball, which is not working out at all. Yeah, no, and the a tick, tick coming the tick in. Ball. Oh, perfect, perfect tick. Yeah, the Thug Lob Ball, they can tank defenders all day. They're one of the best things you can use against defenders. But, um... Yeah, th that tick there, and just... The commander, it's just a matter of cost. There's just, there just too much cost mm. in defenders, too much cost in, um, with, with the commander there, in cost and in raiders. Fails us and Failthos about to lose their commander, too. Off. Yep, there goes Failthos' commander, and that couple glaives still alive. They're going to go down to defenders, mind you, but still. It's pretty impressive, <laughs> and that's game. So Google Frog wins one, and Failthos wins one. And now I have to figure out how to make this silly thing actually yep. work. Yeah, I, I, I was really um, uh, expecting um, a bit more from Felthus. I think that um, he's probably going to, yeah, <laughs> he's going to pick a hover, hovercraft map after this, I expect. Um, so he can continue to go hover, hovercraft. And um, uh, I hope Google Frog picks something that, um, yeah, his shield play was just not, not nearly as confident. Google Frog going with the very early um, hammers. It was clearly a reaction. He expected a bot map, but I think he still expected Failthus to go for a very defender-focused style, very defensive style, because if you build your own defender line and then use march um, hammers in to nail down the enemies, it's, yeah, that's, that's a very strong um, counter that. We were saying earlier that, you know, some of the lighter artillery units, I was talking about the Impaler, but hammers, really good, and something Google Frog's been using in very small numbers recently uh, to great effect. Yeah, it's... Not something we've seen so far in the tournament, though, so I guess that must be other games, because I haven't actually seen Google Frog, or anyone for that matter, use hammers at all. No, no, yeah, in other games, um, definitely. Uh, I've seen him been using them. Uh, he's uh, used them never more than five, because, you know, that's enough to, like, one-shot a defender, so you just go through and just slowly snipe through defenders. And you don't want a, a huge force of hammers, but, yeah, just a few. They're very cheap. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're not that much more than Rockers, so they aren't, being able they're to... They're harder to use against units, that's the thing, is... You know, yeah. you throw them out there, and Rocco's can't. Rocco's can at least retreat and fight. Hammers, once they've been spotted out, unless they have something to retreat to, they're dead. Which is what you're mentioning, the defenses mm -hmm. thing. But I think that's they're why people don't strong. use them. Like people don't but use they're hammers. They're free damage. That's the thing. For static defenses, um, that's they true. are free damage. You are doing damage with no retaliation. So you just want a few of them to slowly chip the enemy down. Yeah, that that's the point. But at the same time, you're chipping the enemy down, but yet the enemy doesn't really care. 
Like they're mm. being chipped down, but they can just rush in with a few raiders and down yours go, unless you have a bunch of stuff to yeah. back them up. And I think that a lot yeah, of people are exactly. confident that they can build this stuff to back it up, so they just go, forget it. If I'm going to break defense, they'll go with Rocco's, because that'll work well enough, and they'll defend themselves if needed. We've designed the game towards being assault-focused, where you don't... Your response to the enemy spamming lots of defenses is to go in and destroy them and attack them, rather than sit back with artillery and slowly wear them down. But we have artillery weapons in there in the game, in case one like fails plays this very slow game. Where, I mean, you could see in some of the games, Felthas was sitting on, on tons of defenders for just a very long period of time. More, more lots of great things. But he was not, you know, going for any killing blows or anything like that. So you can set up a small sort of line and then just slowly march down his and slowly wipe them out. Yep. And any people who's playing very passive, who has a smaller army. Um, anyway. Mixing in a few artillery units can be the, the counter. Yeah. And we are back on the map, so the map has started, and wing counter is back fixed. I managed to get that. I I meant to put in a manual set command earlier. I've never gotten around to that since I don't know what exists for for the UI library for actually having boxes you can type stuff into. But yeah, back to normal. So Google Frog with one win, won the last game. Failed House with two wins. So Failed House win this, they'll take the game, and Failed House did pick this map. This is Onyx Cauldron, for those not familiar. One of my favorite maps. So, the, the water it looks like it's floating, but yeah. Watery little maps yeah, this, here. This is um. Uh, nice island. Balthus has clearly picked this um to to go hovers on. Oh yeah. Because it's a large map, relatively flat map, but it's a wet map, and it's actually not the best map for hovers because the the shores are a little bit steep and um. And the west side is completely you can imagine inaccessible. If, the southwest. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Um. Although I have seen so hovers. It's, it's it's it's. it's it's a good map. It's a fine map for hovers. It's a good map for hovers, but it's not as good as it seems. Yeah. Although I have seen hovers work as, really well. As all the water would make it seem, it is. Although that, that center lake. Pick this yeah, and then confidence. air for air for Google Frog. Nice early raid. But the thing is, the center lake. I have seen it used really well by hover players, especially when it gets in the mid game and you're just trying to contest the map. Using the center lake to maintain control over that center choke point. There's two choke points, like the southwest center and the northeast center. That is huge. The amount of control you can put on there without... You don't have to really worry about being retaliated against. You just go. It's really yeah. powerful. Uh, yeah, ho hovers are definitely strong. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And I think that Google Frog is... I mean, he's not even... He's not even game to try and play, his, play a, a counter to hover. Uh, he's just going for air and trying to get sort of an advantage from... Forcing Falthas into something he's very familiar with. Defend the spam and forcing him... Um, to not sort of go so macro heavy, not go so radar heavy. I mean, you can see that Fellas oh. right now. Oh no no! Look at look at Google Frog's face. Does this look familiar to you? Because it looks familiar to me. Yeah, I think we can expect a fact switch pretty early. Yeah, one Raven fact switch. That's that's the game with the crane at the top. Surprisingly, going for wind generators first. Though admittedly, I can see why. 1.7 minimum. That's huge. That's a massive oh, that's amount of energy. That, that is super clever putting that up there. I think. I think on this map, more players, spider players in particular, um, should do this. It's hard to get jump bots up there, but spider players should do this and just put wins up there. They're completely safe from everything except for basically air. I mean, nothing else is going to see them. Only an air player sort of going around the back there to try and get an advantage would see them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I love I love the choice. I think um, uh, makes it very safe, very high win values. Yeah, that is that is clever. Although admittedly, that doesn't mean the crane here is going to be. Hmm. Something to think about. Is that crane? Are they? What are they gonna do with that crane? I should probably be okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking that crane there is not really being used for the metal, but at the same time, that's probably fine for now at least. You know, with the cloaky factor going in there, we'll see conjures going around, building metal along the north side, and then from there it'll be pretty stable. So yeah, why? I mean, I, yeah. well, cool, I think that um, it, it's fair to use it to build wind generators if your commander is, is, is the commander's not building any energy. I mean, you know, there's uh, there's like a salt mm -hmm. on the base and, and that's all. So if he can continue to expand with his commander and maybe build a, a conjurer and um, take more metal extractors. And I mean, that's fine to have the, it, the um, crane rely on, uh, rely on the crane for, for energy. But um, my health has just gone for... Yeah, flail plus and lots of big expand, lots of constructors, 
lots of defenders. Which is perfect. And he's actually a, he's ahead economically, which oh, is yeah, kind of worrying. Thalethos did the right thing. I mean, mass expansion, as we were mentioning before, is the counter to air. I mean, the fact that it's primarily not air, notwithstanding, is the counter to air. Yeah, I think that um, I think that Google Fog could have been more aggressive. He could have gone for more um, constructors and gone mass expansion himself. He could have gone for more um, ravens and really tried to start snipe the constructors and things. But he's just going for a bit of harassment, then a quick switch. And I mean, it could work for him if he can get more sneaky expansion in with the uh, constructors. But uh, yeah. I mean, it's sort of working now. He's sort of he's sort of on parity now, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, but here comes the raid. They've been on parity for a while. I think a lot of it's going to come down to who, basically, who sneezes first. Like Failthos right now, they have these the raiders that are doing a pretty good job. That they lose those, they have no real pressure. The Raven, that's huge for Google Frog. If they lose that, at least for the moment, for the time being, until they start getting more waves up and generally more cloakies up. They have no pressure. They're yeah, pretty well behind if that happens. And the Swifts are vulnerable. They're not that good against uh, daggers because they're vulnerable to them. Mm -hmm. the, the Ravens not that good against da daggers because the Ravens just slightly too high weight. I mean, it's something like um, if you snipe scor Scorchers, Ravens are actually really good at that. Daggers are just, just a little bit too low weight to be sort of really worth it. I mean, it's it's free damage, but um, yeah, the fact that they're they're actually all right against air makes this um. Makes it kind of hurt that uh, Google Frog just lost two metal extractors there. Yeah. And at the same time, though, he's, got his he's going for the glaives. Although I think that's not going to work. With all the defenders. Yeah, all the defenders in plays are going to just kill them off. There's no. Yeah, there's it's, no like, saving it's like that. we were saying that other game where it's like, oh, wait, you switched you switched against. um, You switched into Cloakbot against air uh, to build. Well, you switched out of air into Cloakbot to build glaives. So it's like, you know, why would you... Why would you do that? Why not build Rockos or Warriors? You know, something that kills the defenders that your opponent has inevitably built as a response yeah. to your air. Especially yeah. since Google Frog was doing an intentional air fake-out. Mm. See, I would have gone vehicles. I mean, I can't criticize Google Frog. He's, he's uh, number one right now. But I would have gone vehicles and um, built, say, Ravagers. Although Ravagers, I mean, they're not getting... I don't know if I would have gone daggers, for Ravagers. But... Levelers, I think, would have gone for Oh, uh, levelers would be good. I think level or Rav ravager, maybe both of them. Although the thing is, that's all right if you're switching out of airfac after a little while. But he switched immediately out of airfac. Yeah, that was into that like was a almost into a standard game. game. So make, going ra level, it. going ravager and stuff that earlier, going anything but raiders that earlier on a map this large is, yeah, kind of a difficult decision to make. So I can see why he's making um, glaives, but they're not doing much for him. You want your land switch. I sort of feel like you want your land switch to be a little more devastating, a little more surprising, uh, to, to sort of ha have the enemy off kilter where they've built all this AA and uh, oh now they have to have to change up and start building different units to counter you. Mm -hmm. Units that are bad against air, not you know defenders and more daggers. Yeah, that's the thing, and I think that that's what we saw twice: once from Failhouse and now from Google Frog. But Google Frog isn't in a position where they can lose this game. That's the thing. It's 2-1. Google Frog losing this game loses the match in the tournament, and that's it. Then There's still even an economy, which is um, nice to see. And Google Frog has several constructors, like said, constructors which are hidden. It's the first to sneeze. Like The first person who messes up and loses a bunch of stuff, that's where it's going to become a problem. And it looks like Google Frog is going to be that person. Google Frog having all the glaives fall back, but thankfully forcing their fighters into something of a choke point. Unfortunately, that Raven not helping out and the Glaives being pushed back into a position where they really can't move out of, and the Glaives just tear them apart, ripping Google apart Frog those warriors. Again. So these these won't these won't be do much more damage, but they've done enough and they've taken out enough that he can retreat safely. Yeah, the warriors are going to do a bit of damage on the rear, but it's it's, it's not enough to no. really make it worth it. I think that um the fact that Failthus has now gone here, uh you know the game's really evened up, and this might be dangerous for his commander. Oh, wow, yeah, Google Frog's commander is in a terrible spot. Although the sharpshooter is doing a pretty good job just holding things back. And yeah, Delphos is too enough, afraid to deal with that. Turrets. Yeah, it, it, it's too much to go in. And that flail about to go down, too, or at least get damaged. Not going to go down, but getting damaged. However, that bomber does not sacrifice itself. Close, but not quite. The second bomber, however, will definitely die in the process. Oh, no. Will it? It will not, actually. We'll kill the raven. Sorry, not the raven. Well, they will kill the raven. That's the thing. It will actually die in the process. I was right in the first place. Not for the you right see, reasons. Um, so. Google Frog is actually trying to terraform 
the lower ramp to make have that entire area to himself. It almost works too. The lower ramp? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, wow. It almost worked. Not a bad choice. I mean, it certainly does. Well, it cuts them off just enough. Mm. At the very least, it makes it makes it harder for Failthus to reinforce. If he had have um, cut that off entirely, he could have quite easily sort of naked expanded there. And by the time that Failthus got up there with the constructor and sort of terraformed it down and things, he could have had defenses in place. Although I think even, even warriors. as it is, I think even as it is, Fail Google Fog can start to expand pretty aggressively inside the southwest area. Yeah, I think it was sort of cut off, and you can see that Failthus is the one who's taking it now, rather than Google Fog. And Failthus is going around the north, sweeping that out again, and making sure that he can't expand. I mean, Google Fog's even pulling back his constructor because he knows that he's sort of lost it. Failthus is taking the um, northeast, and with having secured the northeast, you can see Google Fog has his radar towers all around, so he knows exactly what's going on. But uh, he needs to make something happen in the middle there, which is what he's doing. He needs this to work, this middle push to work, because yeah. there's this huge army in his rear, which he has warriors to defend against, but uh, he just doesn't have so much territory. And that's something that I think Google Frog is probably really concerned about too. I mean, the thing is, these these are coming in here, these daggers coming in, when very few defenses are in place to deal with them. The warriors have not actually gone through with dealing with anything at this point, beyond what they already have. And... Yeah, I don't know. That's pretty big. I don't think he's comp pushed down. He's comp pushed down the middle. It doesn't look strong enough. Um, he's not. He's using. His, he's used his sniper shot on the bomber, which means he needs to pull back. He can't snipe any of these maces. And he's losing yeah. his, his warriors to maces. That's two warriors. Oh. Three warriors. Ah, three warriors. He's going to hit huge. one. Of the, he's going to snipe one of the maces now, which is nice, but not enough. it's going to be a slow attrition thing, and he doesn't have time to do a slow attrition attack. No, because he did. He sneezed first. Yeah, and lost that northeast, that so north center, kind of lost that southwest, broken through, but still Goofrog on the back foot economically, on the front foot militarily, but that just means that it's a matter of time. Those daggers are still causing havoc in his base. Oh yeah, they've finally been taken down now by the warriors, and here come the bombers. Once you've got this many bombers, they can snipe the commander quite easily. Yeah, the commander's going to go down. That's actually going to take out the sniper as well. Yeah, oh. there goes the sniper. I think that's game. I think that's yeah. Um, I think that might be it. He hasn't managed to secure the south side. Um, up the hill, which is you know his territory to take, um, and it has a lot more than the uh, than the other side, which is just in the middle of the pools, which is not easy for a holiday to, player to take. So yeah, I think that unfortunately, um, I think Bell is going to take a three-one, huh? Uh, yeah, I think that Google Frog still has a chance. He um, has a lot of safe energy, so he can do something with um, the reclaim. Uh, Felt is stalling on energy quite heavily right now. Uh, Google Frog has half his uh, half of Failthus's metal economy, but, but he, yeah, equal he has energy economy. Mm, so he needs to retake the uh, metal extractors as quickly as possible. Use that oh, energy parity he has. These sides, get the these sides are probably basically going to be the pressure that Google Frog needs to buy the time. And it looks like they're going to go to the southwest, try to take that entire area, open it up, and possibly allow for the naked expand to occur. Or, well, allow for the terraform to allow the naked expand to occur. And yeah, yeah they I go. don't think he's going to go for the terraform again, but um, yeah, he definitely needs to clear this area out and contest it. And um, he has a constructor there. There's a lot of defenses by um, yeah, right by here. Failthus, but the sites can take them out. He he needs to. Get, he only has one constructor in the area though, so he can only expand so fast into the area. And and he's lost his his commander, which is uh, was a major source of fuel power. Yeah, because that was an econ con too. So that was. Mm. Yeah, it well, wasn't upgraded at that point, though. Still, 12 build power is a lot to lose right off the bat. He has Any a lot of nice, of sneaky... Um, Google Frog has a lot of nice, sneaky constructors, which are sneaking around and things, but they just keep getting disrupted. They keep having their expansion cleared out. Um, he has a, a constructor in the, uh, uh, in, the uh, in the north there, it's which trained. he's trying to build defenders with, but it, it's no good because Felthus already has defenders in position, and you you know, you know can't snipe them out the way you can. If the enemy has uh, laser towers, you can snipe yeah, them out. Yeah, and now it goes the crane, things. too. That hero crane, no longer there. But still, the southwest yeah. has been destroyed. Felthas has lost the southwest completely. Google Frog starting to expand there to take it back. And some Swiss just to try to put a bit of harassment. Does actually get rid of one of Felthas's ravens. Yeah, Google Frog, Google Frog is actually um, he's, he's balancing a bit more of the economy out. Um, but Felthas mm -hmm. is still 10 metal ahead. Um, Felthas is kind of actually accessing now, which is dangerous for him because he's only spending metal, 20 metal, which is. Uh, Google Frog. Now he's, uh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, he's starting to finish it now. But he's got a full. Now. He had he had a full resource bar, so he was accessing at some point. He's he's got he's got his ha a handle on it now. He's um. Yeah, just probably build the character guy right now. Still. Yeah. That does give Google Frog a chance, and it's actually a chance that Google Frog is taking advantage of. Yeah, with uh, with reclaim when Google Frog is reclaiming, uh, he has you can see he's spanned out a ton of constructors. Yeah, Google Frog is in, in parity when he reclaims, but um, he's still a little bit behind. He needs to stop these daggers. Because these daggers are going to just snipe more metal extractors again. Although these sires are still alive, so that's still... That looks like they're going over to the northeast from the looks of it. Yeah, he's another two, two, two sides up that direction, while his own side... He, he, the three sides he had are, are okay, moving so out probably, as well. The three sides are going for the center east and the northeast sides. Probably going to the northeast. Might actually stop this mace as they're going through. Yeah, they're going to stop that. They're, uh, they're not going to stop no, the mace, but they're going to get spotted by it. Yeah, that, that's least. unfortunate. But uh, yeah, no, these sides can do a lot of damage. The number one thing they'll do is if Faelthas panics, pulls all his forces back, doesn't contest the left side, because Google Frog is mad expanding right now. He is naked mm -hmm. expanding so far hard there that and nothing's he is, stopping it. There are yeah. daggers. There are two. There are almost two dozen daggers. But he's ahead on energy. He's ahead on metal now. He's actually ahead wow. on metal. Um, Without reclaim. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, with, with I think with a bit of reclaim. Uh, but yeah, without without reclaim, he's he's hit back to parity. But uh, but he has reclaim as well, and all of Faelthas' forces are being distracted by these sides. But he needs to worry about this big dagger ball and all these bombers that are building up. Faelthas has had an economy advantage for quite a while, so he even though that, even though Google Frog has come back to parity, um, he needs to he seriously needs to um, get some counters up to what Faelthas has. Yeah, especially now that these ravens are getting free reign. If they go around the side, Faelthas gets wise to where Google Frog is up that power. That's going to be a huge blow. Yeah, it looks we like some these sides have managed to escape. The daggers cannot chase them up the hill. Yeah. Actually, I think it does a lot of damage, too. Wow, that was a good... That was a really nice set of raids there. Although, it Google looks like... Frog is now in the advantage, so Faelthas needs to use his, eco his, his army superiority advantage. right now to clear out the... Um, ah, and it looks like that will happen, too. The daggers going just north of where the warriors are. The warriors are out of position quite badly, but the daggers will only be able to take out two metal extractors and one conjurer, and that'll be it. They'll go down, they'll try to get to the lotuses, and that will kill them. Yeah, that doesn't... Uh, that's something that's been done uh, over and over again, which has helped, but what really matters is the lower left-hand side. Yeah, the southwest. There are oh, now man, halberds. halberds coming in. And the halberds, the two maces on their own could wipe out all those static defenses, but those two halberds can just... They can just completely wipe out this naked expansion. Yeah, and there's not much to deal with. There's one bomber. That's about it. And with all the swifts flying around, there's no way Google Frog's going to throw that out there, meaning that Google Frog has lost that southwest once again. And that Google was him on top of that. He has done an excellent job of restabilizing this game. He was so far behind that, you know, I would have called it. And he's done a really good, good, good job of stabilizing, but he needs to get... Um, he needs to deal with these maces and um, and daggers. Mm-hmm. Actually, surprisingly, Google Frog, thanks to the Sharpshooter upkeep, is now running low on energy. Stalling yeah. energy hard. He can honestly afford to turn their cloaks off. It's not, he's not using it right now. That's true. Not sure if Google Frog notices that, though. But yeah. Looks like Google Frog just continuing to push more and more of them. And building more energy. That's what Google Frog is opting to do. Just push as many wind generators as possible in that safe spot on the cliff. There are now a ton of laser towers in the middle. So many that they actually managed to beat beat off these halberds finally. That, that's okay, that's so good. Google Frog has managed to at least salvage some of the Southwest expansion, but it has become yeah, contested. Yeah, stabilizing, and he's also taking. Split. He also has enough air to beat these bombers, which is nice to see because bombers are, the bombers are quite a threat. The air superiority that Faelthas had. Google yes. Frog, it's he's still scraping by though. His his economy's back down into the toilet. It is, but at least these lotus... Ah, one lotus left. That's not going to do it. That mace will be able to take out their conjurer. The conjurer's best bet is to run. One of them will yeah. get away. No, one of them does not get away. Almost almost recloaked, but didn't quite. Yeah, Google ah. Frog is um, back into into the pits. He, he He's... He's, I think the energy stall is one of the things that killed him there, but also not having units in position to defend the south. Yeah. Or something. Uh, I, I think, I mean... Mace and Halberd are very strong against defenses, so he needed something there. Um, obviously, the best thing against Maces is, is Bombers. 
Um, so if he had a bad bomber's in position, but Failthouse has, it's so close to Failthouse's big um, fighter patrol, that that'd be a very difficult thing to well, do. That's what I was saying, like, Gulfrog's not going to throw those bombers out to their death like that. That would be foolish. But yeah, time, with clear, ooh, these bombers, clearing out that ooh, other side. not going to a safe spot. Mm. But still, Failthouse is probably going to, probably going to sweep in from the north. Just avoid most of this stuff down here in the south. And Gulfrog trying to retake the southwest. And that, I think, is going to be Failthouse's cue to take the north side. And probably, with that, take the main base. Yeah, I think if Google Frog could get up some defenses right now, like some Stardusts or and or HLT, something really beefy to stop this huge dagger push. Because I mean, daggers are pretty vulnerable to defense, especially something like Stardust or a big field of LLTs. He could afford to make this big push along the south, where he's has a bunch of um, still cloaked actually. Um, he has the energy to, for it now, but he's had to yep. really overbuild energy for that. Um, he could afford to retake this, but I think this will just be Felthus's cue to just. Actually, yeah, <laughs> well, Veldas has gone straight to the middle lake first, which is not what I expected. I was expecting to sweep from the north along the north side and just mm. avoid that. Because you can do that along the plat like the platforms between the north island, or the north sort of, yeah, islandish area and the main base, the northwest main base. That's hover passable. But it looks like, no, going through to the center, going through the most well-defended area at Millie Goofog's forces are mostly out of position, but still, that is the, that is the hardest area to penetrate. I mean, Google Frog cannot possibly pull back in time to the, to defend this. No, Google Frog is going with the huge bomber force. He's he's going to move the yeah. He's finally moved his huge bomber force in. That's enough to basically snipe um most of Google Frog's base. Yeah, yeah. he's just been too ec economically behind. To he stabilized for a minute there, but he was just too behind on 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 army advantage, and he couldn't get the defenses up in time. No. Nope. So yeah, this this is game. I mean, it, it was Google Frog was behind the whole game. He did a really good job of um not just defending in a losing position in like economic losing his position, but stabilizing his own economy, which is one of the most difficult things to do. Is not it, you, Google Frog's really good at defending against nothing. You know, he's good at defending uh, when he's yeah. down. But to actually stabilize your economy is and sort of get back in the game is much more difficult. But in the end, he couldn't turn it into an army advantage, the the economic lead he had. He's managed to kill all these, um, again, Google Frog's really daggers. good at He's not, He's yeah, Google daggers, yeah. not dying. They are certainly doing a good job on that, as I mentioned, but... Well, the Southwest Force, I still think, might actually do something. Yeah, they're, no, they're it's, still it, it looks strong. pretty damaging, and you can see how much this contracted Felthas's force. I mean... Yeah, it's really strong, but um, he, he has nothing behind it. He has That's no, true. Um, no follow-up. Yeah, he needs to have kept some of those conjurers alive. Like, if he had kept some sneaky conjurers alive, managed to get them out, and then just be re-expanding right now, reclaiming and everything. But he's just he's down to so few metal extractors at this point that he's just got only 8.5 income, which is just not enough. No. And here come the halberds to break the base. Yeah, the Glaive's trying to deal with that. They probably won't. Oh, the Weir actually coming in. Nope, still still alive. Just barely, yep. but still alive in this. Those sharpshooters doing through, and Google Frog fighting tooth and nail, as should be expected, as as they should. Fighting tooth and nail this day in this game. Google Frog is amazing. Their, their energy this game. is safe. What do you can do with so little? Well, the energy is safe. That's the biggest thing. Felthos doesn't know where it is, hasn't spotted it out, hasn't tried to destroy it yet. Sharpshooters are still safe. The Gremlins actually are pretty safe. Oh, actually, the Gremlins are not that safe. The bombers can't stop them, but nope. Google Frog finally, Google finally gives up, and that is three one for fails us. That was that was it. That is game and match. That is tournament. That well is very impressive from fails us. us. Yeah, I've and unfortunately all hover with victories. Unfortunately for the hover factory, yes. <laughs> what do you? Because you think? Oh, now it needs enough. Yeah, I yep. think. I think. Yeah, well, I think that's probably. I mean, I think that's probably fair. I mean, we've had a I I know for a while. Well, I have to see what Google Frog thinks. I think Google Frog is going to want to play a lot more games. He's going to want to play oh, the tank versus and, hover matchup. So they should. It's just that still, yeah. <laughs> if it's bad for anyone, it's bad for the hover factory. After the way it, um, I mean, this is this is what it. What you want to learn, um, you want to take the advice of the someone who's abusing something. Like, if, if Failthus thinks, no, hovers are alright, I'll keep using them, and I think someone will figure it out, but Failthus is saying right now, no, actually, I don't like hovers, hovers are really strong right now, hovers are OP, and, I mean, the sponge... I will show in, it to you, I will win won. a tournament with hovers, because that's the thing, Everyone, anyone ever says, yeah. 
if this is overpowered. I don't know if it's come up in 0k, but I've seen it in other games. Like, you say it's overpowered, okay, win a tournament with it. And yeah. Belvoss yeah. has done that. So I think yeah, he has it's, a... I think against has really high-caliber players, too. I know, against, you know yeah. Who, who should... You know, it's not like he's not experienced against Hovers. Google Frog knows Hovers by now. I know. I mean, I'm I was... not sure whether Google Frog felt confident in some of those games. I mean, he, he he went for a Hover Hover Mirror matchup, which is, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, it clearly it's. I mean, to be fair, uh, this is not oh, Failthos Hovers are OP. A Google Frog has now jumped down to position number three on the ladder because of that, and Failthos has jumped down up to position number five. But um, it's not oh, just Failthos is um oh, exploiting Hovers Hovers OP. Failthos is really good. He built. Google Frog, he beat Google, beat Google Frog on a big ma macro map like Comet Catcher in a hover versus hover mirror matchup. So yeah. kudos to Failfast for playing really, really well. Yeah, that was just knowing how to set up, knowing when to attack. The, the positioning choices on that, especially that comm snipe early on that won the game. That, that swung yeah. it around. And his transition to Mace as well, I think, um, uh, was really strong. I think Google Frog's um, had it, had his gambit. Mm -hmm. You know, he did a bit of a gambit and with the. Um, with the the mace drop, which is not bad, but but it, it would have worked. He kept getting his stuff swept out. It would have worked if it had gotten the basically have gotten the production out because that would have bought a minute. That if would have bought him a minute, fusions, and it would have been huge. Hmm? Both fusions, yeah, both fusions, because the then the second out. fusion would also have destroyed the caretakers and possibly mm. gotten the factory as well. At that point, it would have been a minute or at the very least thirty seconds of free time, and Google Frog mm. needed that to stabilize. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, I think that's it's 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 a shame we didn't get to see a, a tank versus a hover matchup or Google Frog trying to Cloaky pick versus a, hover a, on blue end. That would have been cool. Yeah, or or some matchup where um where you know it's a smaller map where you can afford to go bots with a little more heals, where hovercraft have a little more trouble, where you can sort of showcase some of the ways to beat it, um especially to sort of shut down that um that dagger or yeah, well that's. That was definitely worth seeing. So at least we know some of the ways that hover work. Although, honestly, I do think that if there was that split in the raiders, then at least if daggers weren't as big of a thing, then critical masses, you'd have a harder time building them up. I would think so, at least. Depending mm -hmm. on how that anti-unit raider is set up. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this is just my idea. My, my solution to right, almost every yeah. problem is we need more units in the game. <laughs> I mean, this is me, isn't it? This is just, this is just classic... Um, uh, sacked off them like you know, let's, let's have an amphibious factory let's, let's you know let's let's make every factory viable on you know and well, it, it's, it's I like of, that idea I no, yeah. admittedly it's it is probably a little over one for new players to go in and it's like oh yeah by the way there are 120 units what yeah yeah it's like 10 per factory uh, but, 12 factories well 11 yeah, factories but yeah yeah I, I I'm just um I've always wanted more uh units in in the hover lineup um but uh, it's sort of it's 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 actually really hard to add units there because it's, it's the, unit, the units there they're, they're, they're pretty robust, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it's hard to say what role is really needed. Like one thing they don't have other than the scalpel is AOE. They don't have an AOE based riot unit, but the mace is so strong at riot anyway, and the scalpel is kind of flexy riot. I mean, it can yeah, it, got, it has AOE kill quite enough. a few units. Yeah, it has AOE, but it's not a riot unit, but it has AOE. And then you have a splat, splat, line splash from the dagger. That's like, do you need an AOE based unit? I was hoping yeah. that the that the uh, depth charge hover would be have some sort of land usable purpose, either with AOE or as a mine layer. One of the ideas was that on land it just puts down mines. Yeah, just drops mines, mines below it as it goes. Like a wolverine. Oh, but, yeah. okay, so it throws them. Okay. But not with a short distance. So oh. you just attack an attack an area and just go blip, 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 blip. And slowly pop out mines. You move to another area, blip, 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 pop out mines, and um, that that would you know add another mine mechanic to the game because I mean I I like mine laying as an idea and it's something that that um that uh, the tier based games in general. Have really struggled with is having it work well without being overpowered because it's such a territory control advantage mm -hmm. and I think we with ticks and roaches we have that working really well but um, yeah I mean I think Google Frog probably has ideas about what he'd like to see with the hot factory yeah well anyway I think that's pretty much it so thank yep. you all for watching thank you Sackdoth for joining me on this thank you for having me on yeah so it was good so I will be on it tonight. Well, today it's like 7.30 a.m. <laughs> yeah.
But it's night for you, so anyway, you have a good night, I'll have a good morning, and that will be it. So thank you all for watching, and actually before I go, I should point out that it was actually Lightman was also doing stream on this as well, and through the videos, and we'll be throwing the videos on YouTube as well, as like Game Innovator is their channel, so you can check them out as well for another perspective on this. And then these will be on my YouTube channel, well, most of you will have already watched it on YouTube. So that previous comment will sound a little bizarre. But yeah, they will be on YouTube, or will have already been on YouTube by the time you watch this on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.